and welcome to Fast Girl Speaks. Today is Tuesday, December 7th or 6th, I don't know. And this episode 187, I think. Maybe it's 88. Maybe it's 95. It's 180 something, though, I'm pretty sure. Hi! I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. I'm your hostess, okay? Although it feels weird to say that I'm the hostess because, like, I feel like that implies that there's somebody here. Even though that's not, I know that's not conventionally what we say, but it's just a little weird. Just, I don't know, all of a sudden it struck me. How are you? Oh my goodness, since last time we talked, so much has happened. Real, well, really not that, but kind of a lot. Thanksgiving in the United States happened! What, what? Right? I haven't talked to you since then. That's right. <laughs> oh, before I forget, I am wearing my shard, which if I'm not mistaken is by Romy Hill. I'm pretty sure that I'm not a liar who lies on that one. And it's another crafty girl. It's the yarn. But I can't remember what colorway it is all of a sudden, but I actually have a project page for it. I know, right? What? It's true. I did do a project page for it. Okay? Okay. But back to what I was talking about. What was I talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> so we did, oh, Thanksgiving. So we did Thanksgiving, and that was fabulous. My, my mamaw, who is, yeah, my mamaw. It's very confusing because I call my grandparents mamaw and papaw, my maternal grandparents. But my mom wanted to be called mamaw. So, like, now Tova calls her mamma, uh, her and her husband mamma and papa, but I still call my mamma and papa mamma and papa, but Tova calls them little grandma and little grandpa, so I have to remember to talk about them in that for those words when, like, you needed to know that, sorry. But my mamma and papa, <laughs> so my mamma is in a rehab center right now. She, um, so she's sick. Um, so we didn't, she wasn't, so Thanksgiving was just me and Tova and, and Phoenix and then my mom and, and her husband. So there were five of us and there were also five pies. <laughs> it was crazy town. So then, so like that's five people were, and then we went to rehab and visited my mom and papa. And then we went to my partner's house and his family have like, uh, there were like 20 people there. So I'm a little bit like, <laughs> I ended up playing on the steps with the little children, and I'm not even like a kid person. I totally am not. But it was just like, ah, too many people. <laughs> but then we had Fiesta. We do Friday Friendsgiving Fiesta at my house, which is, um, we do the Friday after Thanksgiving as our friends get together. And so, hi Olive. And so we always do we always do Mexican food or Tex-Mex or some like weakened version, but anyway, it's always very delicious. Oh. And this year, I was so proud of myself. I don't know for some reason on the way home from Thanksgiving, I had this like, or maybe it was even before that. I guess it was before that. I can't remember. Whatever. I had this like intense. I felt like I was compelled to make some sort of like cranberry jalapeno chutney for the tacos. Because I, um, I do a pork taco, like just pork shoulder, pulled pork shoulder. And then I do a, a butternut squash kale taco, which by the way is so good. <laughs> but it's even better when you mix the two together. Oh my gosh, it's insane. It's so good. But so I felt this like intense compulsion to make a cranberry salsa for them essentially. It's not a salsa because, well I mean it is a salsa because it was a sauce. Um, it was like not a tomato-y thing. So I used some of my candied jalapenos that I made this summer. So I used an eight ounce jar of those and a pound of, and a bag, is, is, is it a pound or just 12 ounces? But anyway, a bag of cranberries. And I cooked those together with some orange juice. And I think that's all I put in it. Oh no, no, I did not, did that one have orange? I made so many cranberry dishes. I literally went through five pounds of cranberries in three days. It was bonkers. I made two cranberry cakes. By the way, if you've never had cranberry cake and you're new to the podcast and you hear me talk about last year, it's amazing. I get my recipe from The Kitchen, which is K-I-T-C-H-N. So if you just Google, I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes, but people, really, hi. Um, this is just The Kitchen, so it's K-I-T-C-H-N, cranberry cake. It's so good. It's delicious. 
I will say that she bakes hers in a 10 inch spring form, which I've done and is beautiful. But it's very hard to get the middle of that cake done because it's a no leavening cake. The only leaven and it's very buttery. And so it's hard to get the middle done. So this year what I did was, so last year I made it in a 10 inch spring form. Then I also tried it in six inch spring forms, which did work better, I think. And, uh, but this year what I did is made it in like a, t like a 10 cup tube. I didn't use like a fancy fluty one because the cranberries do caramelize on the outside a little bit and I was afraid that that would stick and that it would be a hot mess. So I just used like a 10 inch tube pan that you would like make an angel food cake in or whatever. Oh wait, I said 10 inch. I think it's 10 cup. I don't know that it's 10 inch. Mm, I'm not sure. Oh, and I don't make the the topping. And her on the rep is, on the, if you look at the recipe online, she has like some like pecan brown sugar topping. You don't need that. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But you don't really don't need it. If you want to be real fancy, put some sanding sugar on it. It's beautiful. Anyway. Oh, and I still cook mine the same amount of time, even though it's in a pan with a hole in the middle. I'm telling you, it takes a long time to cook that thing. Um. Oh, so I made that. And then I made boozy punch that involved cranberries. And then the jalapenos that involved the cranberry jalapeno chutney. So I can't remember if I... I think the boozy... Uh, I made like a cranberry sangria. You make cranberry, we're well, supposed to make cranberry brandy, but I'm not fancy enough to own brand, brandy. Like, I do have English in my blood, but we're like the poor downstairs English. We did not get brandy. Maybe some bathtub gin, but. <laughs> so I used rum instead. And you make cranberry rum? Well, you cook like three quarters ish of bag. I'll try to remember to put all these recipes on. That'd be kind of fun, right? You cook like three quarters ish ish bag of cranberries in orange juice. And I can't, I think you put it the orange, I think it's orange juice and vodka. Now I'm totally confused. Anyway, so you cook that together and then you let that sit. Not for a long time. You can just let it sit for a few hours. And then you strain off the cranberries. You can either put it through a fine mesh sieve or you can use a food, food mill, whatever works for you, okay? So, and then you add a bottle of white wine, a non-oaked Chardonnay, or if you're me, some like Oliver Riesling. <laughs> Whatever, we're not fancy people, okay? And it's got cranberries and oranges in it. Like, it doesn't need to be fancy. And then you're supposed to use a bottle of sparkling wine again. I had the sparkling wine in my cart and I was just like, who am I pretending to be? I'll just use hard cider. <laughs> So delicious. It was mucho delicioso. So we made that and then I made the cranberry chutney, which was, I'm not gonna give you the recipe for that because I just made it up. And quite frankly, do you really have a jar of candied jalapenos just laying around? But basically, if you didn't have candied jalapenos, it would be a bunch of jalapeno peppers and some cranberries and some sugar because cranberries are tart, yo. Like, mega. So it was delicious. Yes, it was called Sparkling Cranberry Sangria, people. It's from The Wholesome Dish. I'll try to remember, but it's Pinterest and I might forget. I know, right? I'm telling you. But it was delicious. And then what else? The cran I was very excited about the. Although by the time I'd eaten all of those cranberries, I never get indigestion. That's a lot of acid for your body to intake. <laughs> I totally had like the burning esophagus. It's like, what's wrong with me? I was like, oh, I think I've eaten like a pound of cranberries this week. That might have something to do with it. And orange juice from the boozy orange juice thing. Anyway, it was all delicious though. Successful! It was very good. And we had cranberry cake. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's all. I think that's enough for shenanigans. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should remember to timestamp this. We're at nine minutes-ish. I'm not going to remember that. Anyway, it was crazy kooky wacky. This week's episode will have some more embroidery and Christmas ornamentry. It will have some knitting. It will have some shameless self-promotion and a very brief game review. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, okay. I feel like there was something else shenanigan I was supposed to talk to you about, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Like I've, I've hidden Christmas presents. 
underneath my work table, like in the bins where I usually keep bags that are sewn, that are getting ready to ship. So I keep looking over there and be like, yeah, no, that kid can't tell if there's anything. She would never look under there anyway, except randomly sometimes when the children all come to my house, they play hide and go seek. I have a 1400 square foot house and a business that I'm running out of it. <laughs> and when they come over, there are like eight adults here. So anyway, so I was just like being like, oh, I wonder if they play hide and seek under there if they'll see anything. But no, they still can't tell if there's anything in there. <laughs> Anyway, so sorry, I was distracted, uh, but that's my baseline. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, so the first thing I want to talk about is, I don't know if you remember last week, I talked about um, my collie birds from Moo Crafts. I finished another one. Ah! Right? How fun are they? And then the other side is, blink, because it's four collie birds. <laughs> How cool is that? So I'm very pleased with it. Um, somebody asked me, and I can't remember which it was on the boards or somewhere else. Um, I talked briefly about this Sulky Super Solve, Fabrisolve, Sticky Fabrisolve thing that I use, uh, that's recommended in the pattern. And she said that she had used it once and had a lot of trouble getting the, um, I don't know what it's made out of. It's like, it must just be like a starch. Because when it gets wet, it does get very gelatinous and kind of weird. So, um, sorry, I'm right in front of the window and there's cars pulled by. <laughs> um, so the first one I made, I did have a little bit of trouble getting that. It wasn't looked like, didn't look like paper at all, but it was kind of like this sticky, stiff starch stuff and I had trouble getting it off. But I thought that it was probably because I had put it into soak. So what you do is you, um, I used directions from mm crafts. So from the person who actually did this pattern. Um, so you put it in a bowl of wa cold water and you're supposed to let it soak for 15 minutes, I think. And then you use the spray nozzle on your sink to spray them like really close because you don't want to rub it because you don't want to mess up your stitching. And, um, so you just like spray it really close and you have to do them individually. And I had a little bit of trouble getting it off. I had to do some of them two or three times. I assumed it was because I left that in there too long and like it just like got crazy. But it did still ultimately all come off. I just had to use the spray thing a couple of times on some of them. So then this time, and also that one had black in it, which the black, it seems like the darker colors, it's harder to get it off because you can see it much more easily. Like you can feel it on the lighter colors sometimes, like around the edges especially, it seems to be harder to get off around the edges. You can kind of feel maybe it's a little stiff, but you don't see it. But on the darker colors, again, it's like a starch and so it shows that you can see like that it looks more marled or, or pebbly or heathered -y. Heathered is a better word. So, but it ultimately all came off and it was fine. And I didn't have to resort to scrubbing anything or anything. Um, this time, I did just do follow directions and I only soaked it for 15 minutes. Did I say that I forgot to, and I left them in there for like an hour last time? Because hi. And that's the reason I thought. So this time I did the directions and the light pieces came off super easy. Like the, the blue and the gold and the pumpkin-y color came off super easy. The gray, again, I had a little trouble with it coming off. Um, I don't know if it's because the gray is like a heathered and so it has a little bit more surface texture to it for that starchy stuff to adhere to or if it's because it's darker. But ultimately I d was able to get it off. I just had to do some of the gray pieces twice. But so yeah, yay. So there's that. And then I may have had to buy, I had to buy it. She just released Maids of Milking People. Come on, focus. No camera, I'm really not back there. Just only focus on this. <laughs> Camera's like, but we sense that you're back there. Oh my gosh, do you see it? <gasps> what is that nonsense? Do you see them? I had to. And my... So I've got to make one of those. I don't have any wood beads. But the nice thing about this one is you don't have to worry if you have some felt on hand. I feel like it's easier to um, make this little chicky happen. Oh, I like the yellow and the blue together. It's so fun. Anyway, I think it's easier to make her happen with felt you happen to have on hand. 
Um, because again, it's clothing. It doesn't have to be specific to like a bird or anything like that, but I'm pretty excited. Yeah. So anyway, you can find this pop. She has an Etsy shop. If you just search MMM crafts Etsy, you'll get there. Uh, but she also has a blog, which is M mmmcrafts.blogspot.com. Sorry, there's a lot of some stuff happening. I'm like the dogs. I'm very confused about what's happening out there. So anyway, so there's that. And that is, somebody did ask me if that was needle felting, and no, it's just embroidery on wool felt. Okay? Okay. Okay, what else we can talk about? Okay, so I finished some stuff. Okay, I finished one thing. No, I finished two things. Oh, I forgot the thing back. All right, whatever, I'll show you these first. So last time, if you remember, I was working on these fun little mitts. And now I can't remember what this pattern is called. <laughs> wither. The Wither Sew Mitts. W-H-I-T-H-E-R. Wither Sew, S-O, Mitts. And that is by Bristol Ivy. And these I made with Cloudborn Sport. The pattern does call for fingering weight, but this Cloudborn that you get from Etsy, no, from Craftsy, I, you definitely, I mean, for me personally, their fingering is definitely a light fingering. And I think their sport is fingering. And I got a skinny of DK to do a gift with, and it's sport. So I would, if I were going to buy it for myself, I would go up a yarn weight for whatever I'd plan to make. So if I plan to make a DK weight, I would buy the worsted. Does that make sense? So there, those are done. Yay! So the only thing I don't like, it's not the pattern's fault, it's just the way I do my stitches. You can see that they don't, like, one side is knit two togethers and one side is SSKs, and my SSKs that knit two togethers are not perfectly symmetrical. So one side, this thing lays flatter than the other, but I don't think that the the recipient will mind. And if she does, I'll take them back. <laughs> and these are my super fancy mitten blockers, which are made out of a placemat that I got from Target. I would never have made that if it, well, if it's, sometimes if it's a gift, it's nice, especially since it has this weird thing. They do look kind of funky off the blocker. They look a little bulbous. <laughs> But there they are. Yay! And then... Oh, I'll just show you that since I've already told you what the pattern is and we're talking about it. Um, I don't want to lose these. <laughs> of course, now I'm going to be like, where did I put those things? I'm going to stick it out a little bit there. Okay. This gift knits pile. So then... Speaking of that, I just have a very briefly started another pair. These are also with the cloudborn fingering. And of course it's a dark gray and a purple. There's purple is like that color purple. So I started that pair. Yay, that. Okay. My other finished objects though are this pair of socks. I know you haven't even seen them before because I just cast them on. And if you're new to the show, that's very fast for me to get a pair of socks done in two weeks. I know people are like, oh my gosh, I've only been knitting on these socks for like three days. I'm just, that is not who I am. <laughs> so anyway, so these are just plain old afterthought heels, Laura Linneman. Um, This yarn is Nomadic Yarns at her sport weight. I think she calls it Twisty Sport, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the Lupin colorway. So this is a men's size 9. Women's size 11. Oh, there's a little flippity flap. So anyway, this yarn is so pleasant to work with. I really dig it. It goes a little bit faster. For example, this is what I would normally think of as a 64 stitch sock, and it's only 60. So it goes a little bit faster than sport weight or fingering weight. I knit fingering weight socks on a 0, and I can knit sport weights on a 1. So they go a little bit faster, which is very pleasant, but they also feel nice and sturdy. But not so thick like a DK or a worsted sock where you're not sure if your foot is going to fit in your shoe. So I think the sport weight sock is a great. A little bit faster than fingering weight. Nice and sturdy and warm, but not quite so bulky. So again, that's Nomadic Yarns in her twisty sport, I think it's the base. And that's the Lupin colorway. And of course she does a ton of dyed order. Which is one of the nice things. You can get to sport if you want to. 
may have a Christmas sock yarn coming, hopefully today, in the mail. <laughs> I'm such a giant nerd. Because clearly I need more Christmas sock yarn because I definitely don't have two or three skates that I haven't even begun to work on. They're from like years past. Okay, okay. Whatever. So talking about socks, I am also knitting on these. This is Diabolical Yarns in her Tarhi sock, which is 90% superwash Tarhi, 10% nylon. You get 115 grams, which is 430 yards. This is her brown eyed girl colorway. I totally dig this yarn base, people. I love it. And then this pattern is. tricking you because I know it's in here but I don't know what it is okay it's Petty Harbor which is by Raina Curtis that's a free pattern and I realized these are for my papa and I real I think I'm afraid that they're a little bit kooky wacky they're a little bit variegated for him but I think he secretly just wears them at night anyway so hopefully he won't care too much but I realized that I'm pretty sure these are exactly the same pattern I used for his other pair. Which they, I think they totally are. <laughs> He's not gonna mind. <laughs> oh goodness. So again, that's Diabolical Yarn in her Tarhi sock in the brown eyed girl colorway. And then the last thing I've made any serious podca podcast. Any serious progress on is a new project to me. It's the Interlude Shawl. <laughs> oh, that's terrible the way the color's picking up. In the real in the photograph, it's like gray, yellow, and purple. Anyway, it's the Interlude Shawl, which is by Lisa Haynes. And it's a worsted weight because I may have had to purchase some of Susan B. Anderson's new yarn. What? I was doing so good at not buying any. And then something happened. I don't remember what. I must have bought something nice for somebody else and been like, I deserve a treat. And I really was only going to buy one skein. And then I bought three. <laughs> <laughs> so this is her... Bartlett Yarns in her worsted weight. This colorway is Field, and of course, I had to have that color. I really had every intention of doing, she has this color, which now I'm, the, the dark gray is Peppercorn. I can't remember what this one is called, but you'll, it's very clear which one it is when you're on her website. Um, But so originally I was like, I really had my heart set on getting this. Well, I didn't have my heart set on it. I thought I'm going to get, did I say Bartlett? I meant Barrett. Barrett. B-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. Um, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> but it's Barrett. Bartlett is a very different yarn. Um, so this color in brown, which is one of my super favorite color combinations, this is Bluff bluff so she has a beautiful chocolatey brown called bear and so I thought I needed those two to be together but then this stupid color always gets me I love this color so much it's similar it's a little bit greener I think than the than the um yes it is greener than for example like Quince and Company's honey it's such a so I was all like, why do I feel like I need these three colors together? Is that really going to work together? I'm not sure what I'm thinking. Do I? So then they came in the mail. <laughs> this is my three color cowl, or three color cashmere cowl by Johi, by Hohi Hokotelli. Yeah, maybe I like those colors together. 
Mm -hmm. So anyway, but this yarn is really, I really am digging it so far. It has a great, it is so squishy and great. I am, I'm liking it quite a bit. So here's my shawls so far. You know, I make pattern bags for a living, right? This is not even in a, in a project bag, really. I was, it was cast on in a flurry. <laughs> I originally had intended to make a cowl with it, but then when I came and I realized I had that other cowl that I was like, well, maybe I should make something different. <laughs> so I really like this pattern so far. Um, yeah. And then, so then it'll go, it'll do this transition again with the blue, the bluff and the, um, field. And then it'll, it'll be this on the other end. It'll be, sorry, reverso. It'll be like this on the other end. So it's one of those very shallow, long shawl scarf things. It's the boomerang shape. What? I totally dig it. It's very fun to knit on. And I feel like I really just wanted something. I've been doing all these socks and those little mitts and, oh, my Stephen West shawl, which is on ones. <sighs> so I just feel like I needed something that would get done fast. And this is doing it for me. I mean, this is just like a few days knitting. Right? How fun. So yeah, I don't know how to wear or anything like that, but I really like the colors and I really like the hand so far. It's nice and it's soft. It's not like, but it's not as shiny as like a merino. Actually, just, merino shouldn't be shiny, right? It's a short staple. Whatever. It has a nice matte finish and it's very squishy. So I like it so far. Definitely think it would be fun sweater. Sweater. So there's that. Okay, that is all the knitting and spinning. I know there's really no knitting and spinning. But when there's, when there's holiday knitting to be done, I just feel too guilty trying to do spinning. So, oh, I should have done it at the beginning. I forgot. Okay, before I do shameless self-promotion, if you donate, well, this is shameless self-promotion, but in a different way. If you donate to the podcast in November or December, you are really entered into win one of two of these. So this is a pattern uh, print that I did for New Hampshire Knits in her Thistle Thistle Company? Oh my gosh, what? Why can't I remember? Anyway, so I did this print for her. So she was the exclusive distributor of that bag, but I had just a tiny bit left over. So I made some for you as a prize. Oh, the Wooly Thistle. Whew, sorry, that's her shop. It's the Wooly Thistle. She's Jameson and Smith now. What? She has lots of UK imports. So anyway, you can be entered to win one of two of these if you donate to the podcast in November or December. And I'll pr draw prizes on the first week of January, the first podcast of January. Okay. Now, the next shameless self-promotion that's actually shameless and totally self promoting will be a an update on December 9th. So that's Friday. It'll be the what I expect to be the last update of the year. If you ordered a free to bag, it's going out late this week. They're all over there. You can see them. It's a big stick. But on Friday the 9th, there will be an uh, update with these bags. So there will be this super awesome metallic. That silver is metallic, if you can't tell. Box. Awesome, is it? And this is one of the cotton linen exteriors, so it has a nice feel to it. I did interface it because it's not quite enough body, in my opinion, for a large wedge. But with the interfacing, it just makes it oh, it's like nice and beefy. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So there'll be those guys. And then there will be... So this is the sock plus, sock patch plus, and this is a, this is lighter weight than my regular, because there's a matching one. So the large wedge is the, t is the standard twill, the nice heavy decorated weight twill. Uh, but I did do some sock batch, I never do sock bags in these fun custom prints, um, but 
the company has introduced a lighter weight twill bag or fabric. So I can, the problem is with this fabric, it's too, it's got too much body to try to do in such a small bag. It gets all like, ah. but the lighter weight fabric, how fun is that? I mean, how much do you love this Robin? I love it. I'm going to marry that Robin. Right. And then we're going to have cocoa and out of fun vintage kittles in our, do you say kettle or kittle? I know it's supposed to be kettle, but my people say kittle. My husband and I had this whole huge discussion about whether your family calls hot dogs wieners or hot dogs. My, I think my grandmother only calls them wieners. <laughs> anyway, cons wieners. Like the, I think the reason I remember is because my grandfather was a stray dog that my grandfather really liked, and he would give it cons wieners. Every time it would come over, like he'd give it one a day. And my grandmother made a huge kerfluffle, not in a bad way, but she just thought it was funny that he was so extravagant with this dog to give it a cons wiener. And she had to like say the brand name every time. If you're from Cincinnati, you know what cons is. Anyway, so yes, that fun. Cute hats and mittens. Doesn't this look like you could be Susan B. Anderson's friend in this world? Like this is where Susan B. Anderson lives. <laughs> in her magical Wisconsin land. Right, how cute is that? This, if you buy one of these bags, it doesn't make you Susan B. Anderson's friend. <laughs> I, I, know, I own no part of her soul. I cannot distribute it to you, but she's awesome. <laughs> but these bags are awesome too. And the cute little fox, right? Anyway, so those will go up December 9th. I'm still kind of, um. The sock bag will either have a lining with cute snowflakes on it or do I have the plain unbleached lining? To be honest with you, I really was excited to do the fun snowflake lining, but I would like it to just be a little bit stiffer. At the same time, it's nice that you can put it in your purse and you can wad it up and it's still gonna look nice, so I can't decide. But it's like a piece of electronics. Well, now it's not that way because now everything is lighter and made of nothing. But it used to be when you'd pick up an electronic thing and it didn't weigh anything, you'd be like, well, that's cheap. And so you'd have to pick up the heavier one and be like, mm, yeah, that's worth it. So that's, I don't know if that's how I feel. Like if it's just like this trick that I think it needs to be heavier or if it really needs to be heavier. But I think maybe it's just a trick. I think it is just a trick. I think it's actually really great the way it is. I can't tell. <laughs> Either way, very fun. Is that enough of me talking? Oh my gosh, it sure is. Oh, hey, no, it's not. Ha -ha! <laughs> Very briefly, I want to tell you about, since we're close to the holidays, I want to tell you about this fun game we got. It's called Harry Potter Battle for Hogwarts. No, it's called Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Sorry. There's my dad. It's fun. So this is, um, it says ages 8, 11 and up. It's for two to four players. And it's a cooperative deck building game. Now I'm going to assume a lot of you don't know what that means. And that's totally fine. Because if you are not a gamer, if you're a gamer, this is still a fun game. But if you're not a gamer, or if you're like me and like, I don't think I get to call myself a gamer because I don't actually play enough games, but I do collect a nice collection of them. <laughs> and I watch other people play them sometimes. But um, even if you are more familiar with non-traditional bot board games like you know you don't just play scrabble and stuff oh scrabble so even like for me that i i feel like i am a kind of into gamery games like more complicated like there are games we have that have 30 page rule books and i'm okay with that but my husband is not okay with that at all zero not interested this is a really good game um whether you have people who are it's not into games or you have younger kids who have not played a lot of games uh, but it's a good it has it's cooperative so you're playing together so even if somebody doesn't quite know what's going on you can help each other that's the whole point is that you're helping each other so there's never that one person who just feels frustrated because they don't know what's happening so that is a very good thing clearly then if you have little kids 
you can pull them along too. And they get to you get to play as a character. You get to play as either Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley, or Neville Longbottom. So if they have any familiar with the books or the movies, the artwork is all movie artwork. Um, it's actually photographs, stills, whatever. But anyway, so what it is, is it appears to a, a huge range of people. In fact, the, the um, manufacturer of this game or distributor of this game is Usopoly, which is one of the companies that does all of like the weird Monopoly games and stuff like that. So they understand that their audience is not just gamers. They're not like fantasy flight games or something. So they tried to, uh, they clearly made a decision to make this game accessible to everybody. And one of the ways they've done that is to actually introduce you to the game in stages. So when you open the box, you'll see that you have games one through seven and each time you play, you introduce more rules. So the game, the direction suggests if you have played a deck building, game, deck building game, you just go right to, I think four or three, I can't remember. Um, some people have said just go right to, just go ahead and f play with the full deck. Um, the full rules set. Each time though, if you don't, if you're not familiar and you want to kind of incrementally inc introduce rules, um, it's really well done how they do that. It tells you exactly which cards to replace or which to keep in, um, and it does just add rules. It doesn't change anything, it just adds more rules and more depth as you go along. It's really cute. So, you get a game board, which you don't need the game board, but it does help to keep things organized, especially if you're not used to this kind of game. So it's completely not necessary, but again, it's nice if you're not used to this kind of game. It gives you a place to put everything and kind of lay everything out nicely and it looks fun. And this is the armor on the front and that's so fun. And then and the rule book is not very long and it's well illustrated. There are lots of YouTube videos too about how to play the game. Each time you add rules, there's a place to do that in the back. So each time you open up one of these little boxes, there will be additional cards or dice. And then there will also be a supplement to the rules, which will add more rules. So anyway, and so then the box itself has like these, so these are like your little health meters because there's spells that do bad things to you. There's these great, oh, I will show you those because those are fun. So you get money and attack points, but they're also these cool little metal skull pieces, like that are really nice, that are part of the game. Anyway, it's really fun. You get to battle the different villains of the Harry Potter universe, and your deck consists of different spells and allies like oh look Hagrid is one of your allies so you get to use your Hagrid card or like a fox card right or you can get some butterbeer wow ah, or you just drop it or the essence of Dittany is like a healing card so it's really fun and again it's a good introduction to a more complicated game versus like sorry or whatever It's a good transition game for people who are not as used to that, but it still has enough depth, I think, to keep somebody who is more familiar with those things uh, engaged in the game. If nothing else, you're kind of helping your other players and helping keep things on track. So anyway, so that's my very brief review of Hogwarts. Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battles. Jeez Louise, woman. Really? I said it like two minutes ago. Um, this is kind of a pricey game. It retails for $49.99, uh, but the production quality is very nice. Very nice. This box, <laughs> going back to my thing where heavy things are worth more, right? This box weighs a ton, <laughs> so you feel like it's like, oh, okay. And if you don't have a local game store, um, you can purchase it for less online. I think lots of times it's, I think most places it's $39.99, like at Amazon or cool stuff, but... If you go to your local game store, they might have promo cards. Mine did. So yay. Anyway.
anyway, just thought I'd let you know about it because it's a fun game and it might be good to add to somebody's Christmas list. Okay, now I think that's all I have to talk about. Right? Oh my goodness. Anyway, I hope you have a great couple of weeks and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.